Greetings community, this is Dominic from 7030. Would you like to create a menu like this? I will show you how with shift. Um, I made a major update to shift and it's much more easy to use now and a better system. So let's just make a small scene and I'll show you how to use it. You can read everything I say in the documentation. It's found in the folder. Um, and will look like this. It's all in detail what I'm saying now, but um, yeah, I'll just um, explain it in this video, so it should be more easy to to learn. First of all, when we have a new scene, we drag the shift controller in the scene. It's a prefab that uses the shift controller script, one of the four scripts we have here and you will see them some states already defined. What you have to do now is you have to enter your number of, um, of uh, states you want to use. States are um, the, the, the global states your game will use. As you can see there are already some examples like intro, main menu, settings. We just make a very small menu now so we can keep it with three states. Let's just make the first state the main menu state. We don't have any intro here. The second state is settings. The third state is, um, let's say, um, I don't know, credits. Or let's say play. Okay. You can write whatever you want. You can make as many object as, uh, states as you want here. And that's it. What you can do now is create a button. Let's go to create UI button. This will bring in the canvas of the UI system and our first button. So let's make a start button which starts our game. Um, okay. First we should name the button. It's important to, na to give it a good name, it, it will make it more easy later. So um, we just name it bot start. And start game. The next step is um, to drag the animation client script on the start button, because we want to animate this button. So drag the script on the button and you will see that another script also is coming on the button. It's inactive client script. Because each button has an inactive um, client uh, that will move him around when, or uh, move him out of the way, to be exact, when we don't want to have it shown up. Um, the other script, the script animation client, is um, for the state we want to see the button and we want to have it interactable can drag multiple scripts, multiple animation client scripts here. If you want several states to use, for example, if you have a pause button and you want to have it in several states, in the playing state and the, the option state or whatever, you can um, enter these states in the here. But we will keep it simple now. We just use one script. So um, let's go to the animation client. Um, to have it more easy, we um, we start here with the rec transform and give the button the um, uh, position he should have. So, if you want to have it uh, in the l uh, lower, uh, let's say upper left corner, we just move the button here where we want to have it. You can use better values. I just um, used this one here for showing it now. Um, so I think this should be okay. What we can do now is copy these values. We, we want to move the button. Let's say we want to move it um, out to the left if it's inactive and we want to move it in to the right like here if it's active. So um, we have the active values here and we just copy them in the animation client.
Okay. Um, as we want to move it, we will select the move button. You can do this for rotating and scaling too. Uh, we just um, use move now. So, um, where should the button be if it's inactive? It should be out to the left. So let's just move it out to the left. Let's say like this. It's outside there now. And we use this value on the inactive client. The epsilon value doesn't change, so we can take the same value here. Animation speed, as the name says it, is for animating and lerping the object. Um, one is the basic value. I think it's a good value. You can uh, change it to, let's say, 0.5 or 2. You can make it for every um, every client and every button individually. If you leave it uh, by 1, it's just a um, basic value. And then it should already work. No. We have forgotten one important thing, it's the uh, animation state. This is the state you want to have the button active. So, if you look at the shift controller, we have these three states. We want the start button in the main menu state, so we copy the main menu state and enter it here. The first state here is the one that will start um, first off when we press play. So always think about what you want to have um, when the game starts. The first state you want here, it could be intro, it could be logo or main menu, whatever. Um, we want to have the main menu now, so we have this um, value here. And if I pl press play now, the button should move in from the left. Yeah, and here you go. It worked. And that's basically it. So if you want to um, modify the, the um, menu, you could just duplicate the button. Name it but settings, for example. And we want to have another position. We could um, and to this value so we can see it. It's always better to see it to modify the values. We want to have it a bit down, let's say here. So these are our new values. Copy, paste. And um, yeah, okay. This is the we want to have it outside too, so let's just copy the inactive value and paste it here again so it's outside. And if I press play, we already have two buttons moving in from the left. Okay, it's still called start button because I didn't name it right, but set things. And now we have our two buttons. Okay, though, so um, if you want to um, modify it now to see some more animation, you could trigger another state. So let's say we have. Um, I don't know, a quit button during playing. We can duplicate this, called quit. And this time we want to have it appear during the animation state playing. We've um, entered it here, playing, in the shift controller. So now we want to have it here um, animation state playing. So the button will be animated when playing. In all other cases the inactive client will um, work and will move it outside of the screen. Okay, so um, we still have to give the start button the option to target the playing state. And that's where um, the fourth yeah, actually, comes into play. The shift target uh, state target. Drag and drop it on the button, and just enter the target state you want to use. And this time, uh, this in this case, it's playing. 
So um, if we press the, pl uh, the start button, we will enter the playing state. Um, and don't forget to um, flag the boxes from the um, transform you want to use. So um, the inactive client also uses the move component, so we flag the move. The same goes for the other buttons. So if we press play now, our buttons move in, and if I press start, they go away and the quit button comes in, because the current uh, state now is playing. And yeah, uh, that's how it works. You can uh, now modify the rotation values for, let's say, the active um, animation. We want to have a 30 degree rotation, whatever, just to show you how it works. Also check rotation. And if I press play now, they should be uh, rotated. Start game. And you also can see um, that um, th you can see the transition between the rotation and the moving. So, yeah. And that's it. Um, the only thing that is left and worth um, telling is that you can also um, use the shift controller and the button component if you um, want to add some events. So, for example, if you want to have a button sound when you click the button, um, you could go, um, add an event here in the button component, drag the shift controller here, and select a function in the shift controller, um, play button sound. You will need an audio source, so let's create one, new game object, sound, and drag the sound on the game object, and here we got our audio source. You can also um, put this into a prefab, I think, and yeah, and now you can drag it here. Let's remove the in awake. And if I press play now, and on our start game button, it should play the sound. And here you go. You can also use these scripts on game objects, which means you can implement them in a menu, for example, like in the demo at the start of this video. And um, it just works absolutely the same way as so if we create a cube, for example, and we drag the script on it, the client script, animation client. Okay, um, like this. Okay. We can also um, just set any value. So let's just scale it, for example. And the scale value should be one by default. And when playing, it should be three, for example. And now we don't have to forget the state we want to have these this scale values so I said playing let's put it here and if we press play now uh, it has the default values and if I press play it becomes big you see so by continuing to do th uh, this stuff you can um, create any kind of menu any kind of animated menu. Okay, so I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and goodbye.